Okay, so let's hear what it sounds like. I'll start with a few low, note, low notes beginning right at the bottom of the instrument. It's a great place to start also for practice. Let's see what a sopotomy sounds like. Maybe that's not quite in the right position. That's better. notes sound quite nice and when I do the octaves um, there's really little in terms of intonational problems there mm -hmm. they, they really sound like octaves so that's pretty good also um, you, um, it sounds yeah. okay you, you can play loudly and quietly I mean it doesn't sort of suddenly Absolutely. cut out it's at not, a low volume no no well that's um, that's a lot to do with your control yeah. uh, but you do want to check that when you're changing the volume, doing those kinds of octave leaps, that the, the, the tuning remains constant, and that, that's always an issue with clarinet. So the response is quite good. Uh, and by the way, um, a note about the instrument, it's an edgeware, Boozy and Borg's edgeware, and in their heyday, Boozy's, uh, an English uh, manufacturer of clarinets, had, had a range, and the bottom range uh, instrument was a Regent, a plastic one. Then it went to this, the edgeware, which is wooden, uh, up to then the Emperor, the Imperial, and the Symphony 1010. So those were all wooden instruments, and the Characteristic of these instruments, or one characteristic which was typical, was a wide bore. This is 0.575 inch bore, and that gives it a particular tone quality which was very prized um, in that era and still is. So, having played uh, a little from the bottom register to the Chalamot register, then we go to the throat register. and clear but um, any clarinet players will immediately recognize that I'm not playing the standard uh, B flat uh, key combination which are, uh, consists of these two notes that note and that note this is a traditionally weak note on the clarinet um, and whenever possible I avoid it by playing the A key plus the second side key here and that makes a very big difference and on this instrument um, the note sounds quite true if you'll hear that side B flat is not quite as good and it's slightly sharp. Mm. So that doesn't work as well. But this so is the other one actually thing. more in tune as well as being stronger? Just yeah. it's more difficult to play, is it? Um, it's much more difficult to play. So. So that's the beginning of the Brahms second sonata and I really don't know what Brahms had in mind but that B flat uh, is at the start of a bar it's the strong beat in the bar and we've got the B flat uh, so playing that B flat uh, side key solves the problem there but as you probably have noticed um, it's it is more awkward to play but it's it's something you can master with a lot of practice mm. so we've gone through the uh, registers there throat register, then we'll go to the clarino or clarion register. We go over the break uh, to the B, and then we go up to the top C. Teeny little squeak there. Um, whenever you pick up a different instrument from the one that you're used to, you'll find that the keys are just slightly different um, mm. and a slight movement of the finger like that can provoke a little squeak. But when you get used to the instrument, of course, you'll, get, you'll soon get rid of that. That's the 
beginning of the Mozart Quintet. So it's quite lyrical. Um, it sounds pretty good, I would say. <laughs> A there, beautiful sound. Um, I hit the side, the side B flat there a little too hard, which is because I'm not quite used to it, so there was a slight deviation in the note there, but really not a problem. That of course is a little extract from the beginning of the Mozart concerto. It sounded fine, the response was good when I went down with the tonguing, down to the bottom there. Sounded really good. So going up into the upper or the high register, I've gone across the uh, break there from the C, not really a break, but you're going up from C to D. Then I hit the E flat, and the E flat is another note, a uh, high note, which is a traditional weak note if we follow the conventional fingering, mm -hmm. which is that. But I didn't do that when I did what I call the fork, which is that one. And you probably heard a big difference. Let me do it again. That top E flat is quite nice. And uh, that's a, a challenge to yeah. do a a forte note and then do a diminuendo from there. But the, the weaker one is uh, flatter as well, isn't it? It's slightly flatter, not quite as strong. Yeah. That's right. Um, but sometimes if you're doing a run, a particular scale, uh, you've just got to do that note. There's, mm. no, there's no choice. There's no choice about it. And similarly with the lower B flat here with weaker note, um, you may be playing a fast run and you really you really can't get your fingers around the side one and you have to do that one but that's just a that's just a feature of the game so that was a top g that wasn't too bad a little bit of embouchure control brings up the the, the the pitch there because it's a little flat at the beginning but that's it. One of the most famous little snippets there from the clarinet register, the beginning of the Mozart concerto. Mm -hmm. it sounds absolutely lovely. Um, so really, uh, there we have it. I think it's quite a nice instrument. It's an old one, 55, 56. That makes it a bit special. It's wooden. Um, it's polished well. I think the inside uh, of the bore is quite smooth, which is nice. And as I said, the nickel keys can be buffed up. You can buy all kinds of nice polish mm. for that uh, to make it a lot better. Um, it's, it's quite playable. Uh, that you might need a little bit of attention with some of the keys, uh, for example, what was it, this one here. If I do that, I've got all my fingers on, and you can see that there's a bit of play there. Okay, so you don't really want that, but um, you might uh, go to um, a, a clarinet uh, repair shop, and they'll probably just put a little bit of extra cork in the relevant place, uh -huh. um, perhaps between the joint here, I'm not quite sure, or underneath uh, to prevent that happening. That, that will solve that one. Um, so there might be one or two little things like that. Tighten it up. Um, play it, get used to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the main one is also replace the uh, mouthpiece. Mouthpiece will be critical, uh, but as I say, any player uh, who, want, who might want to play this instrument uh, will have favorite mouthpiece and maybe a selection of mouthpieces yeah. to whack on and try with a combination of the reeds that they prefer to blow on. So there we have it. Well, very good. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you.